Did you know that during the Spanish Inquisition, they could torture people they thought to be witches, but they could only torture them once? So they would torture them day after day until they died or confessed their sins, and they called it one session of torture. Lionhead Studio seems to have a similar thing going on with the Fable franchise. I want to start this review by saying how depressed I am right now. Not particularly depressed at the game, but by something that came to light while I was playing it, and that was that Peter Molyneux has an OBE, uh, which is an Order of the British Empire. He isn't a knight, per se, but he's a decorated member of the British Empire. And this upsets me. You know what else upset me? Fable 3. I'm in a strange predicament here. I'm a self-confessed graphics whore. Graphics for me are one of the most important aspects of a game, and I've always liked the way that Fable looks. The graphics are perfect for what the game is about. They're stylized and colourful but dark in places, just like real Fables. And I think that describes Fable well. The presentation of Fable 3 is great, it's just the content that's lacking. For the first half of the game, you're tasked with staging a revolution. Which is ironic, really. And you're set off on a quest to learn about how to be a hero. But you're just going through the motions, which is made a lot easier by the fact that you've probably already gone through those motions twice before in the previous two Fable games. Saying the gameplay will be familiar is an understatement. But there have been a few improvements. The spellcasting mechanic is one of the improvements. You no longer unlock spells with magic XP, you now unlock different spell gauntlets. Which you can wear two at a time. This allows you to unleash two different spells together at once, or a double dose of the same spell. Also your mana meter is gone, so once you level up your magic you can just spam the cast button to annihilate anything around you. I do find it a little weird that you have to use gauntlets to cast spells now, seeing as though in the last games you could do it naturally, and I'm guessing those characters were your ancestors. But maybe spellcasting is a recessive gene or something. The Fable series has always been about choices you make as a player, and Fable 3 feels a lot more polar in its choice scheme. There's never going to be a point where you can't discern if an action is good or evil. There's no ambiguity. Even revolting against a king and installing yourself on the throne is seen as a completely good act, not as an act of necessary evil. Having said that, the choices you make once you're on the throne will have a lasting effect on your game. Going with a good ending means you may lose most of the population of your kingdom, but those left after the final battle will see you as a shining altruistic mega-Jesus. And aiming for the evil ending will see that your kingdom is full to the brim of people who look upon you as undiluted hell on two legs. I didn't hate Fable 3, but I hated the fact that there wasn't enough there to warrant a third game. There were changes, but not nearly enough. And there were improvements, but then they took out a few improvements that they made in the last game. Overall, I'd say Fable 3 is an okay game. There are lots of quests to do and some exploration, but the repetitiveness and the lack of variety in the enemies brings the game down. If you've played any of the previous Fable games, you don't need to play this one. And you shouldn't have to buy the same game three times. Or four if you bought Fable The Lost Chapters. My recommendation is just stay away from this one. Go out and try something new. And that goes for you too, Lionhead Studios.